You're listening to a Brawl Network production. This is a podcast for the best fans in the NFL. Are you in the mafia? Am I in the what? It's time for a Bills Brawl podcast. Second down and seven. Kelly with the tie. Touchdown. Bill Brawl. Allen. Deep shot. Touchdown. On the line to Stephon Diggs. And Thurman breaking tackles at the 22. Inside the 10. Touchdown Buffalo. Another episode of the Bills Brawl. I'm your host, Mike Lindsley, at Bills Brawl, at Mike L Sports on Twitter. We bring him in, the longtime Buffalo Bills insider columnist. He is now with the Rochester Business Journal, a best-selling author on Twitter, at Scott Petoniak. My good pal Scott joins us to talk some Bills, camp, expectations, the new stadium talk, and more. Scott, thank you so much, buddy. Welcome in. Hey, thanks for having me, Mike. Always fun. Let's get into the Bill Stadium, you know, news as of recent days here uh, and weeks where it looks like they're going to build right on the grounds in and around Orchard Park. They've already got, you know, the facilities and the practice area sort of built in there for training camps for years to come. We know it's out there again this year for a couple of reasons, that being one. And obviously, you know, we're kind of getting out of Corona. Um do you like the the fact that it might be an Orchard Park? Uh, and and do you, as a follow up, see any any reason there that it wouldn't be in in Orchard Park uh, in the near future? Well, um, you know, look look at I I love uh, I love the stadium itself. I always thought it was uh, one of the best um, places to watch a football game in the NFL, and I've been to the majority of them. Um, so for, from that standpoint, from the average fan. Um, it clearly doesn't have the bells and whistles that the Jerry Joneses and Robert Crafts of the world want and demand. Um, you know, I get all that. And, you know, from a selfish standpoint, I always thought the location I didn't like from the start. I mean, you know, there had been talk about building the original stadium in Lancaster, New York, which would have made it a half hour closer to you know, fans from, from Rochester, which was, is, you know, the secondary market and, and even Syracuse, it would cut off a half hour off that. So, you know, it, it would have been better and it would have been right off the throughway. The access roads would have been so much easier. That said, um, you know, you, you know, part of me nostalgic wise, uh, you know, I'm glad that, you know, the consideration is for Orchard Park, but I, I should point out, Mike, the more I look into this and the more, um, I think about this. I'm still not sure that it's a uh, um, a lock that it's going to be in Orchard Park. I know those were um, the original reports, but I find it kind of interesting that there has been no comments from pretty much anyone other than the county executive, Mark Poland, Carnes of uh, of Erie County. You know, so I don't I don't know if this is a done deal yet or if this is. Uh, actually like some some uh initial salvos like uh you know is, is part of this whole negotiating game that goes on whenever there's a lease extension or stadium improvements or a brand new stadium being built which obviously hasn't happened in in these parts in, in almost half a century and stuff so i you know I, it sounds like that is where they would be leaning toward because it would be the most the least expensive and when i say least expensive we're still talking north of a billion dollars um and uh and people are going to pay one way or another uh you know so you know there's, there's still i guess an outside chance that you know that uh maybe you know the powers that be in buffalo still push for a downtown stadium uh you know i i think i think we've got to be careful here that those were the initial reports and we haven't heard from uh, very many of the parties since, you know, and, um, you know, going downtown is, is, would be much more expensive and it also would, uh, change the dynamic. You know, the bills are known for tailgating and having the spaces out there in Orchard Park to do it and do it, you know, big time. Uh, you're not, you're not going to have that same situation in the city. It's going to be more cramped. You're going to have more, um, 
shuttling in from, you know, different parking lots that are far away from, you know, where the stadium would be built and so forth. So I guess I, I guess I would just take a wait and see attitude right now because I don't I don't know if this is a done deal. These are just kind of the, you know, early salvos being fired here. And, and the other thing you know, that I pointed out in my column when, when this news first broke is that I just don't see, Mike, any way. How are you going to – you're not going to do this playing games in Toronto or even more ludicrous, playing games in Happy Valley, Penn State. You know, that, that stuff's not going to happen. I, I can't see the Bills paying – uh, playing even a minimum of two seasons on the road, you know, so that, uh, you know, this can, can be built in Orchard Park. And, and also, the more I think about the campus setting that they have there in Orchard Park, um, if you're not going to build this on the original footprint, where, where are you going to do this, Mike? Are you going to put it the, you know, the parking lots just to the other side, you know, away from the side where there's the, you know, the airplane hangar practice facility and stuff are you gonna build in that parking lot i i don't know i i i I gotta see you know before um you know i i think that this is definitive one thing that i've always been concerned about is you know putting a dent into the bills mafia experience and you brought it Mm -hmm. up the tailgating is one part but also the wallet i mean you know nailing nailing bills mafia that way i mean the average income Lancaster, Hamburg, Tonawanda. I mean, I, there's a lot of money in all parts of cities and all the rest, and I get that. But Buffalo is a blue-collar town, and the average income is, I don't know what it is right now, but I can tell you this, season tickets right now are super cheap. And I know a lot of people who are season ticket holders, they've been season ticket holders for that exact reason. They might move them and make some money. They might go to four or five games a year. They might go to all of them. They might just buy you know, they might sell them and then get others in another spot. But, Scott, that's a that's a big one-two punch there. That's a big one-two punch blow to Bill's Mafia if they were to go downtown eventually because of what you said. You know, you put a dent in the tailgating and, the, and really the experience. But, man, how many people are going to be able to drop 15, 18, 20 grand on season tickets? Well, and, and the other thing, let's not forget, Mike, that even if this is built in Orchard Park as the initial – reports indicate don't think that this is the the prices of everything aren't going to go way up now i I think we all can agree um that you are not going to charge for personal seat licenses in buffalo new york and western new york um the way that we saw happen you know out in the san francisco bay area for the 49ers new stadium or in other places not going to happen here uh not going to work here now you know my assumption is they're going to build a, a smaller stadium in terms of seating capacity so that you, they can control prices, you know, more for the market size and so forth. But, but I think what people need to understand is whether you go the cheapest route, which is retrofitting the existing stadium, which I'm all for if they wanted to do that, um, you know, whether you, whether you do that or you go, retractable roof, $2 billion downtown waterfront stadium. Um, you're going to pay regardless. Yep. And I'm not, I'm not merely talking about we New York state taxpayers or Erie County taxpayers. Um, I'm talking about ticket buyers and your, your tickets are going to go up uh, way up. Your concessions are going to go way up. Yep. Your parking is going to go way Oh, up. God, parking is going to go nuts. I yeah. mean, I remember going yeah. to a Patriots game, Bill's Patriots game years ago, and it was 40 bucks to park uh-huh. or 50 bucks, And, there, you know, there's only one way in, one way out. Foxborough, what a dump that place is. Um, but, man, Buffalo, you know, you're paying what? I, You know, you can park in lawns now, 10 bucks, 15 bucks. Sure. No way, no way. Yeah, so, you know, when you talk about, well, are people going to be able to afford that, you know, if, if these – prices, the ticket prices go up 25, 30, 40%. I mean, it, it could be that much yeah. to, to fund, to fund this stadium. And, and Oh, by the way, don't think that this is going to be clear sailing that, um, you know, the taxpayers are going to, and, and politicians are just going to cave in and say like, yeah, no problem. No problem. Uh, you know, to, <coughs> to, 
to Terry and Kim Pagul that, you know, we'll go and we'll, 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 we'll give you this, we'll build this stadium for you. Uh, I don't think so. I, you know, this is a different world we're in in case people forgot, um, you know, after the pandemic and, and whatever. So it's, uh, I think this is far from over. And I think we're just in the early stages of, of what's going on. No doubt. No doubt about it. What do you think the Bills, Scott Petoniak, are trying to accomplish in the upcoming training camp? What do you think some of the boxes they're looking to check look like? Well, excuse me. Um, well, one of the great things, you know, I, I, I was looking at at whole situation of going into camp. And one of the great things, Mike, about this is that they're, they're right up there right now where they need to be. And now it's just a case where, you know, they're adding things and, and tweaking things here and there to try to take that next step to get over that hump that is, you know, it's the Kansas City Chiefs and stuff. And so um, they're in a great way. I mean, I can't remember. You probably have to go back to Marv in, in the glory years to find another time where they're going into their fourth consecutive training camp with the same head coach, yep. same quarterback, same offensive coordinator, same defensive coordinator. I mean, that stability. It's crazy. And that's, that's the stability of really, really good football teams. So that's good. So, you know, from, from so what, what you're doing here is you're going to look at certain areas that you'd like to strengthen, um, you know, and, and, you, and, it, and I think the other thing is you've got an abundance of competition at certain positions, wide receiver, offensive line. That's a good thing. That's a really good thing to have. So, you know, as far as specifics, um, as far as players or positions and stuff, um, I'm I'm intrigued with, uh, you know, with what might happen at running back. And, you know, like, I, I, I'm, I'm glad that the Bills didn't use their first pick on a running back because, you know, for everybody who's complaining about, oh, they need, they need you know, well, they, they did, like, score a record number of franchise record number of points with the running backs they had. And you, you, you would have to think that, you know, these guys, this unit is going to be better on experience alone. You know, Singletary, I, I guess uh, people were raving about how great a shape he came back in. Uh, you know, so is, is this, this his chance? And, and there, it's probably going to be a multi, multiple, you know, a committee like, Thing anyways there um you know at that position so I, I'm, I'm interested to see you know if, if zach moss coming coming back you know from an injury mm-hmm. if if he's going to be the guy you know he's, he's a he's a more physical punishing runner you know uh where does where does matt uh Breda, uh you know f- uh fit into this this scheme so so I, I'm, I'm interested i'm intrigued by that you know the other thing you know i talked about like all this talent at wide receiver and and one of these um intriguing and, and maybe the, the newsiest story of the offseason personnel wise is what is going to happen with Cole Beasley, right? You know, given, given his pronouncements uh, about, you know, his rights being taken away and that the players association is a joke and, you know, the whole, you know, whole vaccination issue, um, is he going to quit? Uh, you know, is he going to get beaten out? I mean, for, you know, for, uh, Sean McDermott to, you know, come out publicly, you know, about the issue really, I think spoke legion legions because he doesn't, he doesn't say anything public. He, he, he knows what he's doing every time he speaks to the press. And usually, you know, he masters what many really good coaches do and saying nothing, right. The art of saying nothing and certainly not, you know, publicly criticizing or even, even slightly indicating that he's criticizing publicly one of his players, you know? So I don't, you know, I wonder how that is going to play out. But uh, you know, as as good a slot receiver as as Beasley was, and, and he certainly is, you know, among the best in the league by any any measurements you want to do as far as that position. I do think they've got enough players that at that position that can can fill that role. And you know, and as as it stands, they play uh, they play so many four wide receiver sets anyway. So. So I think that's going to be interesting to see how that all plays out. You know that, uh, regardless, Beasley is going to continue to be asked about it, and is this going to be, um, you know, is this going to be a, a, an ongoing distraction, so to speak? 
Uh, I'm also interested to see, you know, with the offensive line, uh, Cody Ford to me is, is the one like, you know, it's put up or shut up time for him. Um, you know, is, is he gonna, is he gonna finally play, you know, up to the level that a high draft pick should be playing, you know, in the what, his third year, I think in the league, um, or is he going to get beaten out, which is a distinct possibility as well. So, you know, there, and then I think defensively, what's most intriguing to me, Mike, is just, the is the edge rushers, um, you know, and, um, you know, Jerry Hughes is not getting any younger. Um, and so I, it's, it's really incumbent upon, you know, the young guys. And that's not just, you know, that's just not the rookies like Rousseau, who I, I still think is more of a project and will be, you know, used in, in spot situations and in, in obvious rushdowns or whatever. And, you know, but Boogie uh, Basham may, he may be a guy that, uh, of all the rookies may have an opportunity to make an impact right away or play right away. But the, the, the ones that I'm, I'm looking at more specifically at Oliver, whom, you know, we're told by the coaching staff and, and uh, you know, and, and, and Brandon Bean that, you know, he's had a better year, better performance than you actually know. But I, I really think that, you know, a guy who's chosen that highly has to be more of an impact maker. He's got to have more, you know, game-changing type plays. And maybe with uh, Star uh, Latulele back, you know, to, to clog up uh, some of the area and stuff and, and free up people like Oliver that maybe he's going to come through. And then, um, uh, you know, we'll, we'll we'll see also, uh, you know, I, I think with uh, with AJ uh, Epineza, you know, uh, it's time for him in the second year. He, he did play better, Mike, as the season went on. And supposedly he's another guy who's got his weight where they want him to have his weight and his conditioning where they want him to be. I mean, he might have... He might have gotten a little light last year early on, and that, that didn't help. So those are, you know, those are those are several areas that I'm I'm looking at, uh, you know, going going into this this training camp. Let's hit on two more things here, Scott. Before I let you run again, Scott Petoniak with us uh, talking some Bills at Scott Petoniak on Twitter, the longtime insider and reporter covering the Buffalo Bills, and of course uh, you can get his work at the Rochester Business Journal website at rbj.net. Um, I'm concerned as far as, you know what, I'm not concerned. I'm curious to how the Bills handle these expectations, number one. And number two, Josh Allen, coming off of that year, not only expectations, but it's different this year. The atmosphere is going to be what it was before Corona. This team last year had a ton of success home and away, 13 wins, nobody saw it coming. But, you know, you did it in empty stadiums. You could hear everything. You're not going to be able to hear everything anymore, uh, spe- you know, especially on the road. What about those two things? Can they handle these expectations, and can Josh Allen handle that atmosphere that we've seen in the past? And I know it wasn't last year. He had a great year. But we did see, and he's still kind of prone to, hero ball. Mm-hmm. No, it's a, it's a great question. Um, and the expectation – question is always a great one like particularly after you you've experienced success for the first time you know it, it is a i mean real real great success here there's no question it um you know he he, he played uh, had an mvp caliber type season last year and this team did what we had um hoped it would uh you know in that it it, it had you know reached all it reached all the way to the AFC championship game. They, they needed to win a playoff game, a home, get a home playoff game, win the division. They did all those things. They checked all those boxes. But now, as you say, like now, you know, uh, they're not sneaking up on anybody. Um, and, and, and there's going to be a, a greater, uh, hotter spotlight. Um, that's going to be analyzing, you know, Josh, uh, as we go through here. I, I mean, I'm confident that he's going to, that he's going to continue to progress. I don't think, I don't think he's going to necessarily have the numbers um, he had last year. And maybe that, you know, and, and that isn't necessarily a reflection that, you know, he's regressed or whatever. Um, but, um, you know, it, it's, it is going to be interesting to see how he handles, how he handles that. And, you know, and you mentioned about, um, you, you know, you're going to, you're going to be going into hostile places 
places that are truly hostile. You know, it's going to be more than just uh, uh, my, my bed was a little lumpy in the hotel or whatever the night before the game. There's, there's going to be people screaming at you and they're going to, they're going to make it difficult to, you know, communicate plays and so forth. So it is going to be interesting to see how this high powered, high octane offense led by Josh handles um, that situation, but the expectation level never been higher. You know, Bills, Bills fans always um, whine about they don't get the respect. You know, they don't get the national respect, which, you know, to me was always a stupid thing. Like, what do you care? You know, if your team is doing the job on the field, who cares if, oh, we're not being respected nationally or whatever. I, you know, that doesn't matter. But so now you're getting it, you know, and, and you've got, you got, you know, national uh, commentators and analysts and so forth who say like, yeah, Super Bowl, yeah. Uh, long shot could win the Super Bowl, blah, 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 blah. Um, thing, you know, it's expectations that you haven't had for a quarter century. How are you going to handle it? You know, now again, I'm confident in Josh. I think he's an incredibly hard worker focused. I don't think, you know, like, like he had some off season where, you know, uh, an Aaron Rodgers off season, you know, or he's going to go post Jeopardy and play all these, you know, golf tournaments and, 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 play all these games as far as am I coming back or not, you know, like, so I, I think he's going to be focused. Um, I think of greater concern, Mike is always, it's always the thing that we can never predict or account for. And that is injury. Um, you know, he's got to stay healthy. Uh, again, I, I, I love the fact that Brandon B went out and got Mitchell Trubisky as a, as a stopgap, but we know that Mitchell Trubisky is not going to win the Super Bowl for you. He, he can keep the ship going. Uh, if need be, you know, if there's a short stretch where where Josh is out or something like that. But that's the thing I I always worry about. And and I think going back to your point about Hero Ball, Mike, is that one of the other bad aspects of Hero Ball is not just forcing the issue and maybe forcing an interception, but Josh has a tendency still, you know, to to make himself quite vulnerable, vulnerable to bad hits, to injurious hits. And that that's concerning to me because again, it all flows from 17. He's the reason why we're talking about this team as a Super Bowl contender. So he's got to stay healthy. He's got to stay focused. And I think I, I think he'll be okay mentally. Otherwise, I think he'll he'll handle it okay. I, I don't. I really don't see you know that that was some you know some sort of fluke or there's going to be major regression. I would I would be shocked if that happens. Okay. Final thing. Allen contract. Are you surprised it hasn't gotten done yet? Uh, yes and no. Um, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, he, I, I guess his people could look at it from the aspect, like, look at the, the cap is going up next year. Um, and, uh, so I, I could like wait it out and get even more money or whatever. Mm-hmm. Of course you ask yourself like how much is too much after a while, like how much <laughs> do you really need? And I don't, I don't think he's one of those ones, but, but, you know, I mean, he, he could, he could be, you know, in, in, uh, you know, position to get the highest contract in NFL history. He could surpass Mahomes, maybe not in terms of length or whatever, but, you know, yearly salary or whatever. So, I, you know, he's, he's playing it that way. And, and, and you know, I, I don't – I really don't believe that Brandon Bean and, and McDermott are, like, waiting out to be like if last year was a fluke or not. I think I think they're all in as they should be, um, you know, but they've got a – you know they've got to they've got to look long term too, and and not get themselves into positions that other teams have gotten themselves into with onerous long term contracts in which they can't they can no longer keep the people around the star quarterback uh, to enable him to excel. You know, so um, uh, you know I, I I'm not worried about I, it's going to get done. He wants to stay. They definitely want him. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see where it goes. And, and you, you know, Mike, it can be structured in so many different oh, ways. Gosh. You know, I mean, it, how can you figure out? It's like a Rubik's cube sometimes to try to, <laughs> but they can structure it like, and they can restructure it. You know, I mean, Tom Brady did it a million times over. Uh, and probably in, he, in his case, he took under market value for 20 years in New England there and uh, to help his team. And, but and Scott, so, by the way, that Rubik's Cube can be like you turn it one way, you're like, ah, oh, does that fit? Ah, oh, that says 31 million. Turn it to this one, 32 <laughs> and a half million. Uh, 33 yeah. million. And, and then the years are on the other side and you, you kind of have to mix it in, you know? 
Right. And guaranteed, like, you know, what am I getting up front? Yeah. How am I, yeah. how am I going to help them out cap wise and, and help them help myself out? Like, mm -hmm. Oh, you want, you want to keep these guys that you're throwing the ball to? Oh, you know, you want to, you want to keep these guys who are protecting you yeah. or whatever. Well, it takes money. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and, and so you, you, you're part of that equation and, and we'd like to have you be part of it and see how you are part of it. And yet, Hey, I want my money. And we know that quarterbacks rule. It's, it's kind of like, uh, they're, they've taken a page from the NBA stars, you know, and that, hey, we, we got the power now and, uh, and and we want the money. Show us the money. So but again, I have I really don't have any concerns that this is all going to get worked out in a way that, you know, both parties are, are happy about. Um, but, you know, again, there's talk that, you know, that Josh's people don't want necessarily as long a term contract as like Mahomes did, you know, with the, the decade long extension, whatever, that he wants something shorter. And if you do that, that does then kind of make it more difficult to fudge and play around with the numbers to help you out with the cap space. Rochester Business Journal, rbj.net. Check out his pieces. Scott Petoniak at scottpetoniak.com, uh, at scottpetoniak on Twitter, I should say, and scottpetoniak.com. Make sure you visit Amazon and your local bookstores to pick up all of his books as well. The longtime Bills reporter and insider and best selling author and storyteller. Scott, thank you as always, my friend. We'll talk soon. Hopefully, I can see you this summer. Hey, I hope so too, Mike. Thanks so much. Hey.